Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company. So let's know about lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do a lead code premium problem. And uh, you can clearly see that this has been one of the most popular lead code premium problems. This has been asked in companies, that, companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google, Bloomberg, Microsoft, Oracle, Walmart, Uber, Twitter, Apple, Goldman Sachs, TikTok and ByteDance. And also some other companies like eBay, Adobe, Swiggy. Uh, they all have also asked this question uh, fairly recently. So my aim, you all know that I want to get a job at any top tier FANG company and that's why I'm making these videos. So I am paying my utmost attention and I hope you also en enjoy the video. Lead code medium problem and it is one of the most popular problems on lead code if you see the like to dislike ratio. Also the name is meeting rooms too. So basically it is the next version of the original problem meeting rooms that I have already solved over here. So you can check it out from there. Now in this given problem, we are basically given an array of meeting times called intervals and we are given a start value and an end value. And obviously start value is always going to come before the end value like uh, as it should be. Now we need to say that based on the given uh, number of uh, meetings, how many number of minimum conference rooms we are required so that all the meetings can be accommodated and we know that for any single meeting we need at least one conference room and when that meeting ends that conference room can be used for some other meeting so suppose uh say one example we have a meeting that starts at uh, at five uh, and ends at 15 minutes and we have another meeting that starts at let's say uh, 17 minutes and ends at 27 minutes, something like that. So in this case, if we only have one conference room, we are still good. Why? Because first of all, this meeting will take place. All the attendees will attend this meeting at 15. This meeting is going to end and then they are going to leave away from this uh, meeting. And then these new people are going to attend the meeting in the same conference room. So in this case, we can clearly determine that, okay, with one conference room, we are, we are we are sufficient to complete all the meetings now but problem comes when say for example we have a meeting that starts at zero and ends at 30 minutes uh, i'm using this original example that is given so suppose we have we have a meeting that starts at zero minute and ends at 30 minutes we have another meeting that let's say starts at five minutes and ends at 10 minutes and we have another meeting that let's say starts at 15 minutes and end at 20 minutes so something like that so essentially over here we are having three different meetings and now for these three meetings how many minimum number of rooms we need to accommodate all the uh, meetings so clearly we can see that essentially there exists an overlap between this to this meeting and this meeting and there also exists an overlap between this meeting and this meeting so because there exists an overlap that is causing us to create to have more than one rooms because at any given moment two meetings cannot be two, two meetings are happening at the same time but they cannot be placed in one conference conference rooms so now we will have to determine that how many number of conference room we need well we will need in this case we will need two conference rooms why two conference rooms if we look at this start time and end time for all the meetings initially let's say we have a conference room like this so initially this first meeting takes place which starts at this zero minute right so let's say that okay this minute is this meeting is being taken place over here now when we reach at this time number five we know that another meeting also needs to be started but this conference room is also already occupied so we cannot use this this conference room so what we will have to do is we will have to use another conference room and uh, let me draw it over here so we will have to use another conference room to accommodate this meeting over here now at this five five uh, time number five we started the meeting but we noticed that at time uh, at value number 10 we also finished this meeting which means that now all the folks that attended this meeting they are actually coming out of the conference room and now this conference room is empty but this conference room is still occupied with this original ongoing meeting so that we will have to take care of so at value number 10 we already emptied this uh, conference room but again we start seeing in this order so we can find that at time number 15 we still need one more conference room to attend the meeting so we check okay this conference room is already occupied so we can't do anything 
but this conference room is empty because this meeting has already been completed which means we don't have to worry about it so this meeting at that starts at time number 15 or needs to be placed on this second uh, conference room again and then it ends at tw minute number 20 so at 20 minutes uh, all the p folks they empty the, this conference room so again this conference room is now empty now there is no one but this meeting is still going on and when the time clock hits 30 minutes we can see that okay the, now this particular conference room the first conference room is also going to be empty and folks are going to leave it at time number 30 and this is basically the approach so at any given moment the maximum number of conference rooms we are using to accommodate all the meetings were actually two so in this case we will need to return two as our answer the question comes that why we were able to generate this two why not some other value and how do we programmatically solve this problem well the approach is actually quite simple that over here what we what we or needed is only three only two things uh, the first thing we needed is that at any point what was the start point what is the end point and based on the start and end points we can actually uh, come up with some very interesting results so if we see over here in this example what we were doing is that at any given moment we are iterating over this time sequence and based on the starting point of the meeting and ending point of the meeting we are either occupying the room or we are emptying the room and just by keeping track of those two activities we can determine that what is the minimum number of rooms that we are that we need in order for us to accommodate all the meetings let me show you how so over here again keeping up with the same example so let's say that in this example we already have the start and end times of all of them so what we can do is we can have two arrays so first array would be for starting values and second array would be for ending values and we are going to sort both the arrays based on the timing so over here the sorting values would be that what are okay so what are the starting points starting points we have over here is 0 5 and uh, 15 so we have three starting points originally and over here you can see that they are in sorted order but if you look at the original input we can't see them in sorted order order like uh, they can be jumbled up or the values can be given in any order right so first of all we will sort everything and then so that sorting is going to take big of and log n time so that is uh, some activity that we will discuss when we come to the time and space complexity so initially the sorting position currently this value is 0 5 and 15 okay let me get rid of this extra space okay now for the ending values the ending values are uh, 10 20 and 30 so again let's sort uh, sort based on the ending values so 10 uh, 20 and 30 and now what we are going to do is at any given moment we are going to check both of these uh, arrays and in amongst these two arrays we are going to see that what is the minimum value amongst either starting value or ending value and we are going to keep a count or keep a variable called meetings and we are going to increase the value based on whatever the results we find over here so let's try to do that so initially we are, we start we compare these two values we see that okay zero is minimum amongst these two so because we are starting a new meeting which means we will have to occupy a room and because we have to occupy a room what we are going to do is we are going to do meeting plus plus so essentially the the value of meeting was originally zero so we are going to keep the value as one now we are going to now we are keeping the value as one what we are going to do is we are going to iterate over so this we are keeping at this because this this has not been updated in the ending value but in the starting value the zero has already been taken care of so we ignore this case and now for the starting value we compare this uh, value number five so again we compare this value number five with this value number 10 
we see that okay the smaller value amongst these two is still the starting point in the starting array and because we are starting a new meeting which means that we haven't completed any meeting but we are starting a new meeting so because we are starting a new meeting we'll still have to add the value of meeting so currently the number of conference rooms we will need we are going to increase it to two and by the way th this you can call it consider as meeting rooms i just named it meeting just for simplicity okay now again we uh, we are done with this five so again for the start value we increment and over here we are still at this position number 10 again we compare this 15 and 10 so over here we realize that this 10 is actually smaller than 15 which means we are ending a meeting before so now because we are ending the meeting so we we, we will jump on this ending array now we will come to this place and because we ended a meeting which means we will have to subtract the value over here so what we are going to do is rather than having two we will reduce this value back to one but and so now we are at this 15 and 20 so we compare both the values and we realize that okay this 15 comes first so we are starting a meeting now so because we are starting a meeting we are, will again do plus plus so now this one becomes two and uh, we compare this meeting with this answer so both are well both values are two so we don't need to update anything and uh, that's why uh, over here we are done with this case so now there is no more place to start the meetings so in actually we can end over here why because over here the moment we are going to like reach this and this value all we are going to do is we are simply going to reduce the the value of this meeting parameter back to one and then again back to zero so there is no point in us for doing all this work if the starting uh, array has already been dealt with and this would be our solution uh, like this is a very simple solution to understand and easy to come up with and this is also very optimal and it solves the problem efficiently so let's see that what would be the time and space complexity the time complexity in this case is going to be big O of n log n so this is initially for sorting as I mentioned earlier plus big O of n and this big O of n is to iterate over the start and end array uh, so uh, in general we can write this as big O of n log n only and uh, now we are done with this one uh, in terms of space complexity for the space complexity it would be big O of 2n because we are storing two arrays and in the both arrays we are storing some n values so but in general we can write this as big O of n as well and uh, this would be the optimal time and space complexity first of all we are going to check that if the given uh, array of intervals is empty or not if it is empty we are going to return 0 that is not the case we are going to create two integer arrays start and end and uh, for both the arrays we are actually going to fill out all the values in the start where a start array and end array once that is done we are going to iterate over the given input and uh, from the given intervals we are going to fill out the start and end array once this is done we are going to sort the given start and end array and once sorting is done uh, we are going to initialize a couple of pointers so we are going to name them a start pointer and an end pointer and uh, we are going to initialize the values as zero and these pointers are going to be used to iterate over this uh, start and end array and once these two are done we are also going to have a variable called uh, result uh, to keep track of the number of meeting rooms that are needed and we are also going to initialize it to zero and now uh, we are going to run a loop but remember that we only need to run a loop until the start array has some values so we are only going to iterate over the start array because once sta start array is done or the result value is always gonna go down and at any point we are going to check that whether the current start value is actually greater than or equal to the end value or not if that is the case we will have to update the end array and um, the reason we are doing it is suppose we are given a couple of arrays like this that uh, a meeting starts at 0 and ends at 10 minutes and there is another meeting that starts at 10 and ends at 15 so in this case we can actually use just one uh, room 
or one conference room to iterate over why because first meeting has to end first before the second meeting starts this is a condition that is given and uh, we are going to use that hence if this is the case we are going to decrement the number of uh, result that is and we are going to increment the end pointer and if that is not the case so which means that we essentially have a starting a meeting starting before the previous meeting ending and in that case we will always have to increase the number of rooms needed so we can simply increase the result and we will also have to update the starting pointer and at the end uh, once this loop is done we can simply return whatever the result we found let's try to run this code seems like our solution is working let's try to submit this code and we are actually solving this problem way faster than a lot of other java solutions and uh, you can see it uh, over here so i would be posting this code in the solution uh, in the comments you can check it out from there